Alright, this is the website mudfossils.com and in addition to mud fossils which prove that there was giants in the earth, that rocks are literally not just dead molecules that are just all clumped together, they were originally were alive and now they are petrified just like the petrified wood. It's a process of um, electrofossilization in wet platy polar silicates, mud literally, and this happened as a result of the Great Flood. I have absolute 100% chemistry, not theory, not guesses, not, oh, it must have been this, it must have been that, those people were fools. All the ancient texts were literally 100% accurate. They wrote the truth. They were there. They know what happened. We just think we're so smart. Stay tuned because it's, your whole world is going to change if you watch this video. All right, now this is all on the Fair Use um, Act where I, I can make comments on videos about things. Now, this is about Velikowski, and I want you to listen to this because this is exactly what's going on. I'm going to present some evidence that, that just, it's just going to blow your mind when you see what's going on. Hold on a sec. About the pressure that the scientific and scholarly community brought to bear is that it succeeded. They destroyed them. The book, Where the Worlds in Collision, and merely the first of the books, had been on the top of the bestseller list for something like 11 weeks. And nonetheless, the publisher was so uh, mortally wounded, is the only word, by the, the uh, turning away of salesmen from the doors of, of professors' studies Academic. and all of the implications that went with this, that the book was transferred to another publisher which was willing to take it over, which... The only yeah, reason they took it over was they did not have a textbook publisher. Not only was the scientific press copying at him, and in a way that was violent, not in terms of an order this guy is that genius. this idea is yet to be tested and it takes more time and etc., but saying this idea is crazy and any man who has such an idea is mad, insane, that kind of thing. But the establishment through which men who think that way make a living, the academic establishment, was saying to this man, you know, you're not safe. Now, I want to make a point right now because they will not even confront me. Now, Velikowski did the, did the work on the, excuse me, the history of, of what was written in the papyruses, in the Bible, in the ancient texts, in the Chinese texts, in the Mexican, um, all, everything. He went through, and he was before there was computers, so he actually read the real stuff instead of some blog. Now, he comes up with all the right stuff. You see what they did to him. They tried to destroy him, and they did. They destroyed him, and probably almost nobody that's listening to this will have ever even heard of this guy. And I am going to change that because he was right, and now I have chemistry. I have physical evidence that shows that the things that was reported falling from the skies were, in fact, absolutely true. And Comet 67P is a biological chunk of meat. It's floating in space, it's giving off polycyclic hydrocar uh, aromatic hydrocarbons, which are uncombusted meat smoke. The astronauts go into space, they say their suits smell like steak after they come back from a walk. This is absolutely, there's nobody can contest this. I have a video on this, I have videos on all of this stuff. <laughs> everything is wrong, literally everything is wrong. If you can tell me that meat in space is, is works in with the Big Bang and every other silly theory that they came up with, I am empiric I'm an empiricalist. I want to see truth and I want to be able to see it. And I can show it and I am going to show it. So stick with me and you're going to see what reality is. And it's a shame of what is going on, the denials of reality. I have giants that are DNA tested, three DNA tests. I have them, I have them right here. I, and they've been CAT scans, seven CAT scans, DNA tests, world famous anatomist Gil, Gil uh, Headley, who, do, who goes all around the world teaching autopsies, agrees with everything I'm saying. <clears throat> there is no question about these things. And that these things are hundreds of feet tall. That's the facts of reality. Stonehenge, the heel stone at Stonehenge is a foot. They told me never to co contact them again after I sent them a video of it. Nobody will address reality, and I'm done with it. So I want to show you what reality is, and here it comes. All right, this is how the whole thing started. 
Aristotle was an a, a empiricalist. He wanted to see, well, here's what empiricalist means. Empirical, based on concern with or verifiable observation, experience, rather than theory or pure logic. Well, that got thrown out the window when we got all these smart people came in, in the age of enlightenment. Now, this went on since Aristotle, so we're talking a couple thousand years. But all of a sudden, we're real smart. Now, here's what happened. We went to enlightenment. Now, enlightenment, first of all, there was the age of reason, which was, was really working. <laughs> and then they got enlightened. Now, listen to this. The boundaries of the enlightenment, it says about the 17th century, 18th, 18th century, uh, here it is. Intellectual movement, 18th century Europe. Okay, that's when they started the Age of Enlightenment. <laughs> well, listen to this. The boundaries of the Enlightenment are often thought to cover much of the 17th century as well. Now, this just threw me for a loop. Though others term the previous era as the Age of Reason. <laughs> it was the Age of Reason. Now we're in the Age of Enlightenment, which is ridiculous. Every, literally, every single thing that they have that, that is theoretically been changed from what Aristotle reasonably understood is wrong. It's wrong. There's meat in space, absolute 100% guaranteed. There's giants in the earth, DNA proven, CAT scanned, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Light is liquid. It's electrons and vortex particles flashing down. Here's Rodney right now. He's sending me some attachments somewhere. We're doing experiments together. Things are not anywhere near. Einstein was wrong about every single thing he said. E equals mc squared doesn't even work. We know light has energy. He says light has no mass. How could energy equal zero and have energy as light? It's insanity. E equals mc squared. If m equals zero, E equals zero times the speed of light, which had no, no relevance in the first place. It was just there to make everybody think it was a big deal. It's just like multiplying it times 10 or something because it never changes. Anyway, it's that the whole thing is silly. Everything is silly. Now CERN says that the, the reason that, that life is growing on out in, in making clouds is because of deadly cosmic radiation. Well, everybody knows what creates life, uh, plant life, and it's, it's solar radiation, which just happens to be coming down from the sun onto the atmosphere. It's insanity what we're doing. Anyway, I'm going to show you. It's insanity, absolute insanity. And I don't. I, I just. I just get go into these things because it is so silly. The things that we are being told. All right. This is the one that just put me over the top. Now listen to this. This is CERN, which I lead. Um, yeah, he leads it, but it's built this lost. cloud chamber and built an experiment called Cloud. And we're in the process of trying to understand using a CERN particle beam whether cosmic rays have a significant effect on the formation of cloud seeds. And we're doing this in the laboratory at CERN uh, because here we can do everything under completely controlled conditions. And we can this know is exactly unbelievable. What the causes and what I, the I'm just going to tell you what he has contract. to say because it's just ridiculous. In, in, outer, in, in our outer atmosphere, there are molecules that grow as little, literally little tiny plants. They're, they're molecules that literally glow, grow, and he says this, they're uh, bi biogenetic, they're just growing. Anyway, they grow big enough to get frozen, they get, they get coated with dew, and they become clouds. There's it's, it's nothing the mystery here. The mystery is how they could possibly think it was cosmic death rays that were causing this. Because light makes things grow. I mean, I don't know if they have any clue about this, but plants grow from life. And just guess what? Photosynthesis is just happens to be the thing that grows plants. And photosynthesis just happens to be, listen, I mean, I, this just blows my mind. Photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light, which just happens to be hit in our atmosphere, energy, normally from the sun, yup, into chemical energy, which is growing, they're growing, that can later be released to fuel the organism's activities and energy transformation. Nothing here is even close to not understood. This chemical energy is stored carbohydrate modules such as sugars. So well, I got that's fine. I love all that stuff. That's wonderful. In most cases, oxygen is also released as a waste product. 
Photosynthesis maintains atmospheric oxygen levels, supplies all the organic compounds, and most of the energy necessary for life on Earth. Photosynthesis, what is it doing? It's taking electrons and it is eating them. Plants grow by eating electrons. Electrons are free from the sun. There is no nuclear bits. They're spinning through space. I have another video that I'll show you in a second that shows that. Hold on a second. Alright, this is my video about what a vortex particle is and what it's doing. And I'll just let you listen to it. Alright, I'm going to make this extremely short. It's very, very simple. I am saying that light is dark energy. And it's also dark matter. And it, it's in the vacuum of space as it travels from the sun. It's obviously traveling from the sun. We know that. And it's heading towards the earth. It hits the earth. We know that. It's energy when it left. We know that. It's energy when it hits. We know that. It powers solar. It's also energy when it hits something in the middle, like a solar panel or a, 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 the, it turns into light when it hits anything. It's just what it is, is it's a spinning electron, like this. And it spins, hold on, I got a spring around here to show that. Well, hold on, here it is. All right, it's just like this. It spins, and the particle is right on the end, and zip, it spins. Now, some of them spin with a tight spin, and they're high energy. Some of them spin with a loose spin, and they're low energy. This is the wave. That's the particle. It goes zip, 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 zip through space, and I'll show you that on the video. But what it is, they're vortex particles, and they're spinning electrons. Their frequency of the spin times the mass of a resting electron, which is this, this mass, 0 0.0055 uh, atomic mass units, equals a mass. Energy equals mass. Case closed. The spin c controls the mass. Now listen to this. Average 1360 watts per square meter. Now, that 1360 watts, each each electron in that watt weighs this much. The tiny, tiny, tiny. One eighteen hundredth of a proton. So we're not talking about much, but <laughs> where do you see how many there is? So now we got 1360 watts per square meter times a million square meters in a square kilometer times 510 million square kilometers of the Earth's surface. And then on top of that, it's also bouncing into the atmosphere, which goes out another few miles. Um, so that ends up being how many watts actually hit the Earth. And every watt is, can be calculated by a certain number of electrons. So here's what we got. So that amount times the uh, uh, electrons is how fast the Earth is growing. And it's growing like unbelievably fast. And that's why plants and everything grow and everything eats the plants. All this stuff is new. This is not something that should be here. It all grew as a result of eating electrons. By the way, that calculation I gave you is not like per year. That's per hour. Per hour the Earth is growing all of those electrons. Now. This is, um, we were doing experiments with light, Rodney Warren in Australia and myself. I have the, the vortex particle theory and I'm sort of developing a theory of, of all of this and he's doing the, the light experiments and here they are. Now, these are the particles he's seen. I don't know how he's getting such excellent shots, but the damn thing looks exactly like an electron from the, or, or, or an uh, atomic particle from the 50s. Now, you see these little spikes coming up? You see this white on this side, white on that side? I think this is a torus of an electron, is a torus that is like an oscillating energy field inside this torus. It's called capacitive reactants and inductive reactants, but that's a whole other issue. This is, what we're seeing is what we're seeing. I'm just going to show you that sort of speculation. Now, here's the energy fields within inside that particle. Now, uh, hold on a second, I got more. Alright, this is exactly what would happen in, in gasoline in a carbureted engine. This right here is a circular pin and a circular pin, and a laser is coming through here and banging right into here. And you see what happens. Here it's red because it's in that low frequency. It's spinning at a certain frequency that creates red light. As it approaches, the Venturi, it's literally being sucked in here. It has to compress.
to get into this Venturi sled and the wave front compresses and begins to accelerate and begins to gain energy and begins to glow. As it hits the, the Venturi, it bounces a little bit and you get these glowy things bouncing back. Those are the light discs. We have them all over the place. And they come, it comes through here and creates exactly identical to what would happen in a carbureted engine. When gasoline hits the Venturi, it's right, it atomizes out. Now, light it, this this now has been accelerated past normal speed of light in this particular medium. As it approaches the normal medium, which is uncompressed space, this was compressed due to the compression of the laser, which is a liquid, like we're shooting a hose at it. Just think of this as a hose, that's all it is. And it's going all over. When it comes through the other side, it does that. Now, you see how it starts to break down here? Uh, it starts to create nice little shower sand. They're going back into their vortex particles. And I'll show you. This is just so unbelievable what he captured. I just can't get over it. I really can't. It just excites me every time I look at it. And now he's doing some more experiments with pins that are narrower and tinier. And we're going to use multiple vortexes, uh, multiple uh, venturis, so that we can see the wave pattern. I'll show you that in a second. Well, I, he's not doing his experiments yet, but uh, I'll show you what the wave pattern we're looking for is, and you can see it. Here it is right here. That's what they end up turning out to be, these little beady-looking shots coming out. And I'll show you some in blue that are, are, are individuals. I don't know how he did that, but he's got them. And one of them is, see how they, they have different f frequencies? This one here got a little more blasted out than the other ones, so they end up having different intensities. It's just the way it works. All right, this is kind of a fabulous shot here. Now, you see these tubes, each one of these tubes? Each one of those is a vortex particle. This one is highly accelerated, and it shows a right-hand spin as it's going. And you see they're a little wider in spaces, and they stay a little wider further than the other ones. They're compressing quicker. The, vor the, the, the Venturi is down here. They're coming out in an excited state, spinning a little faster than they should, giving off a little more energy than they should, and then they begin to come down to their un, un accelerated state. So here you go, the age of enlightenment. This is water. They always, 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 always show light as in the wave patterns of water, but it's only two dimensions. We show it in three. Now, listen to this. Thomas Young's double slit experiment in 1801 showed that light can act as a wave, helping to invalidate early particle theories of light, which were correct. Unbelievable. Once we got enlightened, we got so stupid. This is the normal reaction we get from academics. Ha, ha, ha.